going on guys and welcome back to the Honeystead. My mom and I came up here to the apothecary. It's one of those gross rainy days, but we figured this would be the perfect opportunity to take advantage of the rain and come up to the apothecary and talk about some of our favorite books. Oh, that that's going to be hard to narrow I down. Know. So we have behind us, we've got our, our start of our apothecary herbalism library and it is really hard to pick out just a few so we're gonna run through i think you've got five that you're gonna just five okay we're gonna talk about our books <laughs> going to go to our standards that we're using right now in our classes that we have been taking as far as herbalism and the first one is Medical Herbalism by David Hoffman. This is our primary textbook that we have been studying now for a couple of years and why I like this book. One, it was the first book recommended to me from our instructor uh, teacher which is Teresa. The school that we've been going to for the last couple of years is Green Comfort School of Herbal Medicine. I've had a few people ask that throughout the way, ask if we're taking any online courses, and really no. All of our courses has been in person, and so what we've found um, that she has shared with us is she wants you to learn the foundations of herbal medicine, and that's basically breaking down the medicinal properties of each plant to like the molecular level and how it affects your body and once you start really understanding how the herb works in your body or supports your and body supports systems. your system it, it really does make you become a, a better herbalist uh, so Teresa has recommended all of her students to purchase the Medical Herbalism book by David Hoffman. And it has been, if you are sciencey at all, you will geek out. Yeah. Uh, so great book to start with, especially when you want to understand what the plant does to your body. Yes. Now, the other aspect of that, this is not technically not a herbal book. I do say it's good to get in a, a basic anatomy and physiology book and then also having just a medical dictionary with you because you're going to want to learn the terminology. When you start getting into like the clinical aspect of doing herbalism, you're, you want to make sure that you're recommending herbs that are going to support your body for a good reason. And there are some herbs that aren't recommended for certain individuals. So having that basic knowledge uh, is great, even if you're doing it for yourself. You know, you wanna have a baseline knowledge of what the herb is gonna do for you, because you don't wanna hurt yourself. This was also uh, recommended by Teresa. Uh, this book is written by uh, James Green, at the Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook. Um, this has been a lovely addition to the apothecary because it covers um, how to use the herbs, what to do with them from poultices to tinctures to glycerides to tea salves making, to, to tea making. Yes, and so the terminology if, right. of herbalism and what do you do with it? Right, so. right, and just a wonderful, you know, uh, a wonderful addition. And this is great as far as a beginner's perspective because it gives you it 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 immerses you immediately into understanding a lot. Right. about the herbs. My next ones are more by the author. Dr. Duke has written many books. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Uh, but what's interesting is when I first started into kind of herbalism, I think this was one of my first books that I picked up from a from a thrift store or yard sale. I think I spent 50 cents on it, but this is the Green Pharmacy. Uh, now, what's interesting is our teacher, Teresa, uh, she actually studied 
with Duke. So for that connection and full circle and then hearing her stories and what she's, how she learned and how she experienced herbalism with Duke, it, it puts a character to all of these books. And even though I never studied with Duke, I feel like he's a part I of us. I feel like we've been we've been blessed to have that opportunity to have that firsthand knowledge. So, uh, my favorite is probably the Peterson Field Guide. Um, this was written by Stephen Foster and Dr. James A. Duke. The reason why I like this book is because it is so easy for plant identification. Now, a lot of our herbalism that we do, a lot of what we're focusing on is what is growing in our area. So. This is nice. It's broken down to our area. Um, we are blessed with the Appalachian Mountains right around us. And so there are so many medicinal plants that are growing in our area. So for us to be able to identify the plant and know how to use it yes. is helpful, um, especially because, you know, it even it even breaks it down into flower color and discusses and talks about the the botany aspect of plant medicine and and the uh, plant identification so the next ones i'm going to pick are northeast medicinal plants by liz neves and our newest edition southeast medicinal plants and this is cory pine shane these are wonderful to help with our wild crafting and identifying harvesting and how to use different plants. Also covers not just plants but some trees, how to identify them, how to use them, um, what they're good for. I'm going to talk about my lovely friend Amy Fuel's book and she has written The Homesteader's Herbal Companion. This book is actually really easy especially if you're a beginner homesteader that is wanting to incorporate herbalism into your life. This is just a great basic Starter. What do you do? You know, salve making. Um, I think she even has plant identification. She even has a seed saving section in this, which it is really nice, especially when you're talking about homesteading. You know, the art of homesteading is that self-reliance aspect. That's the regenerative. Right. It's definitely a great book to start with, especially if you are starting out homesteading. So right. soap making, salve making, all of that. And want to incorporate some use uh, practical uses for herbs that grow yeah outside the in, weeds yeah the weeds you can't talk about herbalism without including rosemary gladstar that is true we have three books from rosemary gladstar medicinal herbs herbal healing for men and herbal healing for women these are wonderful books so packed full of information. Rosemary's These. just been, she's been a staple in the herbalism world. I mean, yes, yeah. for a very long time. What's really nice is in her books, she identifies health issues and then, so you can identify by what in your system is not doing well. And then she makes recommendations for what herbs that can support based on that versus looking at the herb and then trying to figure out mm -hmm. what systems it supports this she kind of goes a little bit different mindset which is well what what's going on and here are the herbs that will support your system especially this book probably it's great for beginners now i also have really enjoyed all of david hoffman's books uh, these two right here are, this one's actually really great. This is the, an A to Z guide. Uh, it has about 200 herbs in it. It's the herb source book. It's a Materia Medica on each plant and what you can do with it. I've been reading that one. That's gotta come back with me again. This is the Adaptogen book and this was written by Donald R. Yance. And it's another really awesome book, very medical, but it, it basically describes one of the most common things that I think a lot of people experience that are experiencing right now is adrenal fatigue and, and how to stress. support your body and how to uh, eliminate the stress and so basically what herbs are good for your body that can kind of help you maintain a homeostasis 
platform. That There's a tremendous amount of information in every single book. So you can take, even as a beginner, you're gonna you're going to read things that maybe you're not uh, uh, aware or knowledgeable, extremely knowledgeable of yet. Right. But it's gonna it's going to pique that interest. To keep that's going. gonna make you keep going because when you learn. And that's what's so fun, I think, about having such a good variety of so many different authors. The other one that I, we came across, but I haven't really picked it up too, too much, is the New Holistic Herbal, again, by David Hoffman. Now, he has, this actually is kind of a little bit more intense than what I thought. It is a Materia Medica, but it also has Listen kind the of, growing. like, the, the breaking down of harvesting and when to when to do it which is actually kind of that is kind of helpful because you don't want to harvest a plant where all of the energy all of the properties in the plant has already passed you want to wildcraft and harvest plants when they're in their prime that's another really good resource to have uh, when you're when you're starting out with herbalism oh she's looking at me because i've got one of my favorites this is by Cat Alice, it's a prepper's natural uh, medicine. And this is, I, I would strongly encourage this, if there's any prepper in you at all, and any herbalism desire in you at all, um, this is a great addition to your bookshelf. This covers, not only does it have a nice Materia Medica uh, section on there, but it's also broken down into different um, salves, poultices, ointments, teas, syrups, you know, just all around for a first aid kit. And um, I've had a lot of fun with this book. Um, and this is probably one of the first books that I purchased because there was something in it that struck me. But it's very well written, very easy to read, and covers a tremendous amount of information. So get medically prepared. <laughs> I do like that one. Uh, another really awesome book, which I think is great for beginners, is has been written by Andrew Chevalier. Now this is an encyclopedia of herbal medicine. This is great because it has pictures. And not only does it have pictures that tells you what, you know, it gives you a little history uh, of the plant, but it also breaks it down to like parts used and how to use it, which is helpful. It's not all the parts in the plant can be used the same exact way. Um, so that's kind of why I like this. It makes it simple for you to read and it breaks it down and tells you how to use the plant. He also came out with oh, a hand cool. guide, uh, which is great. Yeah. Uh, we like convenience. We like to be able to throw something in our bag, especially if we're going out on a walk. Or going for a long drive. Whatever, you know, I don't necessarily <laughs> want to bring this book, but I want to bring this book. Uh, so, you know, Andrew Chevalier, another great herbalist that has some really good information out there. We have a bunch more that we are still working through. This is one I just acquired not long ago, but this is Healing Mushrooms. I picked it up not long ago. I I like it. It's got some cooking recipes with it, but I'm kind of waiting. I've, but I've, but I do know that I do know that I want to start incorporating more mushroom identification herbal books in in this. This is something that I'm lacking on, and I need to. I know that the Peterson Field Guide does have a mushroom book. I'm just not sure if it's medicinal. So that's something that I plan on incorporating uh, in our apothecary soon but we can't forget about the mushrooms. That's right, mushroom trees and plants, it yep. all goes together. So this is also probably one of my favorites um, that I didn't realize how long I had had this book for well over 20 years. This is just a wonderful addition for nutritional healing, lots of information. It incorporates uh, vitamins, minerals, herbs, and food supplements. Food is essentially medicine. What you put into your body is what's going to heal you. So, you know, thinking about the nutritional aspect of healing, I mean, it's 
that goes hand in hand. I mean, you can take all the herbs in the world, but if you're not putting the right stuff in your body, you're not really doing anything. So it's a all around healing. Right. This has been very helpful to add another aspect to our herbalism journey in understanding how things work together for the body. And sometimes when you're not feeling well, what other things that you could do, what other alternatives that you can incorporate into your lifestyle. Um, so this gives a great baseline baseline and greater knowledge to, to other things that you can do to help yourself. Another book that we recently acquired is the Energetic Herbalism. So this was written by Kat Meyer. She's actually really good friends with our teacher, so it was kind of nice to be able to not only, you know, connect that uh, as well, but then also to support another herbalist. But the herbal energetics is something that we are slowly kind of getting more introduced to and understanding how it works, the cooling, you know, the warming herbs, like describing the herbs and, and learning it that way, learning about the, the energies of, of the herbs. So this is new for us and we will be incorporating this as well into our, into our apothecary. But we, we still have quite a few books that we have not gone through and I do plan on adding more. This selection kind of hits the anatomy and physiology aspect of herbal medicine. The basics. It hits the basics, it hits the, the foraging. foraging, it hits the prepper, um, you know. The regenerative, right. because there's garden aspects in here. I mean, this is a very good, well-rounded, whenever whenever Kaylee and I have had a case study to, to work on for, for school, one of the first things that we've done is go to our out. library and pull them all out and read what has been written by all these different authors. About the same plant or the same ailment is how we kind of, you know, how do we, how do we incorporate all of this knowledge? Now, these herbalists have experience with each plant and they have their own experience and their own story on how to use it and how to incorporate. And so it's really, it's a lot of fun when you actually get all the books out and we plan on getting more. And, you know, we plan on finding out and reading about more herbalists. And then we also plan on kind of putting together our own protocols, right. everything that we've worked up um, with our with our clients that we have been able to to be blessed with. Uh, and that's something in the future as well we'll be putting out. But it is definitely a lot of information but it's been a lot of fun. And I do plan on sharing all of these books with you. I will probably go ahead and put a list together of some of our books that we have here. And then some of them I will add into our Amazon storefront if you are interested in purchasing and adding to your own apothecary. Now, uh, there are so many different focuses on herbal medicine. I mean, you could go from Chinese medicine to what we're doing here, which is we're trying to focus on the plants that are growing. Local. Yeah, what's growing here in our area because we want that regenerative aspect. Um, I do recommend getting books. I recommend getting all the books. I recommend getting all the gardening books. I want that knowledge and that excitement to kind of pass on, you know, and keep going. It's planting a seed and how do you take care of it? That's right. And that's something that here is, that's what we're doing. You know, that's, that's, that's our main goal to the homestead. And plus it's kind of fun to go through little scavenger hunts and when you go through the little tiny thrift stores or little old bookshops and find some of these books yeah. and, um, you know, and love them and appreciate them as, as they should, yeah. should be. Yeah, I do, I do think that a, a good book, it's, it's... Especially on a rainy day like today. It is a good rainy day. But the other aspect to having books versus doing it on the internet is I have the books, you know, we have books. If something happened and we lost power or didn't have internet, don't have the ability to pick up a good book and learn what's been written. The internet's great, but there's nothing better than having a book in hand. Yeah, a book in hand and a cup of tea. Yes, that's what we're missing. Oh, that's what it is. I know. We're almost there, guys. It's almost coming. There. Hopefully... Hopefully this week we will um, be making some of the final changes into the apothecary yes. and 
that is going to allow us to utilize this space for more of what we're trying to do. And tea making, tea making, sharing that, salve making, all of that. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye. Bye guys.